Okay, tonight we have Thomas James, uh, AKA Mr. State Board. What's and up, Chan? What's going on, Thomas? So Thomas is gonna share a little bit about his life. Thomas and I worked together for years, mm -hmm. uh, side by side. And he came up with a genius idea. And I'm gonna let him tell you all a little bit about it. But it has something to do with this book right here that is 810 pages long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thomas, um, I got a lot of potential school owners, future school owners, and current school owners, but I want you to kind of start from childhood. Okay. And work your way up so everybody can get to know who you are. Okay. Okay, cool. So first, let me say uh, thank you, Chin, so much uh for let me let me speak here man this is this is amazing uh like chan said you know we've worked for many many years uh you know i've worked uh with chan for chan uh for a long time just off of uh just his knowledge alone is amazing for so for those of you guys that that are wondering or are on the fence or whatever i'll, I'll just say you know we're all here um to make a little more money um, I'll say whatever he's telling you, whatever instruction, direction that he's trying to give, by all means, I'd follow. Um, just because, I mean, he's, he's really, he, he has this, this sense of like knowing uh, either when things are about to happen or when that next wave is coming or um, just being able to, to say like, hey, this is what other people aren't doing. And I think it would be smart to jump in on that. So, I mean, kudos to, to Chen for doing so. Um, so the question was, is, you know, just give a little brief uh, history on myself. Um, you know, my parents had me very, very young, like 16 and 17 years old, or uh, 17 and 18 years old, excuse me. Um, and then it was me, my mom and my dad and, you know, whatever happened with them for a little bit. And me and my mom, we moved to Texas for a little bit. Um, and then my parents got back together. And then, you know, there was another uh, child in there. My sister was born. And so, you know, it was you know, me, my sister, mom and dad, you know, all at, you know, 23, I want to say maybe 24, maybe. Um, my dad always worked in a factory. There was this uh, this plant in uh, in Tennessee called Paramount where they used to, uh, uh, basically they painted all day. And so that's what my dad did, uh, working 12, 13, 14 hours a day, uh, working night shift many times. And, uh, you know, they were just really putting that, that hard work uh, into me. And then, you know, we fast forward, you know, we moved around um, for anybody that knows uh, uh, Murfreesboro, which is a town south of Nashville in Tennessee. Um, we moved around so much. I've went to before they started building new schools. Uh, I've went to every school except for two schools here. So that's how often we moved around as a family, you know, for whatever reason. You know, I was a child. So, you know, to me, it was just an adventure. But as an adult looking back at it, you know, it's like, no, nah, man, we were broke. You know, like when that mortgage was up or not mortgage, uh, when that rent was up, you guys know when you're renting apartments, you know, when that new contract comes, it always goes up like it never stays the same or goes down. So uh, I've lived in all the apartments here in this in this town of mine. Um, we fast forward some, uh, played football, ran track, went to college, got tired of that, um, you know, from just trying to find out who I was and then joined the military. Um, you know, and then two months after joining, September 11th happened. Uh, so I got shipped to Afghanistan about five, six times. Um, did that, still not knowing what I wanted to do. And then from there, um, went to college, finished my college. Let me say that, got a degree. My degree's in political science. Uh, still not knowing what to do. And then my grandfather, who actually got me into uh, uh, just the hair industry in general, uh, he had opened up the first uh, black barbershop in the county. So I don't know if you knew that, GM, but yeah, my granddad. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He opened up the first black uh, barbershop and or back then, you know, they they, you know, they were mistreated very heavy. So he opened up the first four colored people uh, barbershop in uh in the entire county. So that's you know Smyrna Laverne, Murfreesboro, you know, all towns, you know, around. So when he decided he was gonna retire, and my dad was, um, he was like, man, I've been working at a factory for, you know, 30 years. I'm not, I'm not about to start all the way over. 
um, you know, and, and start cutting hair. So that's when, you know, I decided, well, I'll go ahead and I'll, you know, take the family business over. Looked at some schools and then everybody was, you know, just saying, hey, you know, you, you got to run into this dude named Chin. He's getting his money. He knows what he's doing. You know, Thomas, you're a pretty smart dude. Like, find him, get into his school and like, just, just learn under him. And so, you know, when I went and seen his school, uh, which was a large school. How large? Like 10,000 square feet or something like that? 11,000. 11, yeah. So like school was just humongous. And, um, you know, I'm there and the people were busy, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, I mean, it was it was his, him and his, his partner, his, uh, the late Velma de Mumbry. I'm pretty sure he's told you guys about her. That's, that's his friend there. And, um, you know, so after I seen it, you know, and and the day that I seen it, I was like, I, I told my parents and my granddad, I was like, hey, I want one of those. I was like, I'm thankful for the shop and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, there's this black dude in Nashville. He got this school. It's, you know, he, he just corrected me. It, it's 11,000 square feet. You know, they get money. It's fully accredited. I want one of those. So the family was like, look, we'll take care of the shop stuff. Learn from this dude. And then, um, you know, I heard him speak and he was talking about these books that you need to read. He was talking and he was telling the whole class. But what Chen also was telling people was, um, you know, everybody, everybody that that everybody that comes with you can't go with you. So, you know, those people that are lazy, those people that don't feel like doing any work, you know, people, people like that, you know, you don't have to let them fall by the wayside. Like that's not one where, you know, you turning your back on people. That's just one of those things where it's, you know, um, you know, if, if I'm trying to climb up a mountain and, and you trying to climb down the mountain, we can't be attached together by a rope, you know, because because you're going to end up pulling me down. That sort of, thing. you know, I'll just stay at the bottom, you know, and I'll send a helicopter for you when I get to the top, that sort of thing. Um, and so the more he would say stuff like that to us, he used to do this thing. Um, we used to do this. Inspir we were open Tuesday through Saturday. We would do this inspiration uh, every Tuesday. He would, he would tell all of the students, hey, come down to the school. You know, I'm going to say some stuff to you guys. And it motivate us for the week. And some of the stuff that he would say is, is you know, hey, you're going to see yourself. And he wasn't just talking to me. He was talking to the whole school. He'd say, you know, you're going to see yourself start to separate. Those of you guys that are reading, those of you guys that are handing out business cards, this, that, blah, 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 blah. You know, you guys are going to be on one platform and the other folks that come into the school smelling like weed every day, coming in, um, you know, late, drunk leaving early, not trying to cut, whatever, whatever, you'll either see them drop out or you'll just see that they're just going to be a mediocre uh, barber or stylist while, you know, everybody else is going to elevate it and separate. And, uh, you know, the more I started learning stuff, you know, the more I started reading business books, financial books, marketing books, spiritual books, things of that nature, you know, I was starting to see the separation, um, you know, between not only myself, but we had some really good, really talented people that came through there and then we had some sorry people. Um, and so whenever that separation started to happen, you know, he seen something in me, Miss Velma seen something in me to where when I graduated, they offered me a job, um, you know, and I was doing a bunch of stuff there, such as, you know, not only was I teaching, but then I took over the state board uh, prep. And then I also, you know, started doing some stuff as far as files are concerned. Um, you know, so he was teaching me the ins and outs of the, the hair school business side of it, and I appreciate him for it. Um, and then there was a point where after going through, uh, you know, like years of, of, of training and things of that nature, uh, there was a Bronner Brothers hair show that was going to happen in Atlanta. And uh, he and a couple other people were, uh, were trying to get in and, uh, and speak. And so, you know, Chin helped me, you know, write my description and things of that nature and helped me lay out my class. And actually, you know, I, when I told Chin that I wanted to speak, he was like, man, look, you're our state board guy. You've changed our, um, you've changed our, our licensure uh, rate. You know, it, it's now through the roof where we were kind of average at first, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you should just try and prep state board. Because at the time, there weren't any instructors that were trying to, to reach out to students in a state board fashion. Um, and, and now I'm starting to see, this is years later, Chen, because I always, you know, look to see who's trying to do whatever. Um, you know, now I'm starting to see one, maybe two people do it, but for like a five, uh, four or five year span, like it was me, you know, that would go to Bronner Brothers and Premier Orlando and 
uh, the IBS shows in New York and, and Premier Philly, Premier Birmingham, go out to Vegas and uh, IBS shows out in um, out in Long Beach, California, and you know, going around with Major League. Chin actually introduced me to those guys, the Major League Barbers and Team Exotics with Curtis Smith, all those guys. And um, you know, I got on with Bronner, killed that class. But before I did that class, uh, after I got accepted to teach, Chin said, uh, "Well, hey, you like you're gonna be in front of like hundreds of people all at one time. You've got." to find something to sell to these people because they're going to hear your presentation and they're going to want to to get more from you and uh i was like well man i don't i don't have anything to sell you know at the time i was cutting at my parents place um you know on the weekends and just working at the school but i didn't i didn't really uh go into the the product game and all of that stuff so you know i just had you know just my brain and uh chin was like sell that he was like you know what you're trying to do is is you're going to talk to people about you know their problems and things of that nature. And you just, you know, you create a problem, you find a solution. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you find you, you, you find the problem, you create the solution and then have people pay for it. And so people's problems were having troubles passing their state board exams. And then that's whenever I wrote this bad boy right here, right? And so this is my book that I wrote called Blueprint uh, that he was talking about where he said that that Milady's book, hold on. I got it, I got it right here. <laughs> Okay. So, so he's got that one, which he shows you guys is 900 some odd pages. So as you can see how thin mine is compared to how thick the one chin has, right? So mine with pictures in it, table of contents, review questions, all of that stuff, I'm sitting on 61 pages, right? And actually, depending on the name brand of your jeans, this can fit in, the, in your back pocket. So like it's a very thin book. Um, and what it is, and like my first my first page, I tell people, hey, this is not designed to, to change anything your teachers are telling you, but this stuff is state board material only, right? And so, you know, I created that. I put that out there. Things have been selling like hotcakes. I've sold about 4,000 of those uh, to date, which is amazing. Um, and then, yeah, so I just started doing that. People jumped onto it. And now not only do I do that, we fast forward some, I've opened up a school as well. Uh, I do continuing education classes. So all of you guys that, that have your schools that are listening uh, to, to Chen uh, and have been listening, if you have anything dealing with, uh, you know, trying to get state board compliant, continuing education hours, uh, there are seven states that I, I have, uh, I've been granted access to give uh, instructors their continuing education hours. So. That's it right now, man. Oh, and since then I'm also dual licensed. So I'm a master barber instructor as well as a cosmetology instructor as well. And um, yeah, got the book, continuing ed, teaching, you know, still running my parents' place. Yeah, man, you know, so that's that's it. Now for him to take almost 900 pages and compress it and consolidate it to <laughs> 60 pages. Uh-huh. And you now we had students from the hood. You know, I'm from, I'm straight from the hood, the ghetto, yeah. whatever, however y'all want to call it, the projects. <laughs> so we had guys that didn't read. You know, they spoke in present past tense, like he went to his school, where he go, you know, that's how they talk. And with them, when Thomas came in, we went from average to the top from his teaching, just from him taking the meat out of here and put it in that book now i know a lot of y'all would think this seems unreal yeah it does mm -hmm. but them guys see this would scare them but when they read thomas book and they pass so if there's anybody out there because it's going to be on youtube everybody's going to see it a lot of schools have problems i don't they'll have to get the book even for you all that want to become instructors. Thomas is the go-to guy. People call me all the time. Want to take their, their instructor's license. They can't pass the test. They're having problems or issues. I will call Thomas. There have been people in our program that were opening schools that wanted to pass the test quick and easy. Hey, call Thomas. Call Mr. State Board. The, mm -hmm. the, na the name fits him. 
Mr. State Board. He is Mr. State Board, Dr. State Board, because he's going to get you right to pass that test. And when Thomas came to the school, he was one of those students that I always say they had sense. I could tell that his parents brought him up right. Um, I could tell he was educated. He was real smart. I mean, y'all can hear his English language, the way he speaks. He graduated from college, but he's super smart. I mean, super intelligent. So I knew that he could do anything. And when he came to the school, he excelled all the way around. And Thomas would literally run the school. I mean, and a lot of y'all instructors out there right now, you all are running somebody's school. That school owner is probably really not doing that much work. And you're running their school. And it's time for you to step up and own your own school because jobs are created to make the owners rich, mm -hmm. okay? Job, J-O-B, just over broke, just out of broke. So you don't need to work a job for 40 years and then get this little check, a little um, retirement or 401k, no. Get your own school. You, you all are smarter than the school owner. Look, Thomas is smarter than me. What did you score on the ACT? <laughs> I, I don't know. It was, yeah, it, it was it was 30. He scored yeah. a 30. The highest you can get is a 36. If you score a 30, that means you're a genius. I know he's smarter than me. I, I know that. He's very intelligent. And some of y'all are instructors working for a school owner that's not that intelligent. That should give you fuel and fire. That should give you gasoline to see someone less smarter than you. You, I mean, how does that feel? Have y'all ever worked for a, uh, I'm not gonna say a dumb boss, but somebody that you were smarter than. I mean, how does that make you all feel when you work for somebody and you know you're better than them, you're smarter than them? So I encourage you all, and, and y'all reach out to Thomas, Mr. State Board. If you have schools, he has a, a plan for, for y'all to load up on books. Because if we all have y'all school, you got to have a your pass, fail rate, completion, licensure, all of that. When you become NAGAS accredited, you're going to have to have a certain percentage rate of them passing in order for you to stay compliant. So I don't care if students come in dumber than a box of rocks call Mr. State Board, because we're not dumb. He just breaks it down. I mean, he breaks it down where you can understand it. Um, And then when you came to the school, you were on a GI Bill, is that right, Thomas? Yes. Uh-huh. Military. And that's another yeah. thing. For y'all that own schools, the military students are the best. Why? The military sends you, a, they pay right out. Well, whatever the cost of your tuition, they pay and they pay well. And you're getting a great student. That's why the post office, government people, hire people from the military first because they know they have sense. They know that they're gonna to come to work. They know that they're gonna be in compliance because why? They've been in the military. So, so they're, they've adapted to doing things in order. So I just wanted to share that with y'all, but I wanted to bring Thomas on here because Mr. State Boy, y'all need to know who he is. And y'all are going to need him, not want him. Y'all need him. Every school owner needs Mr. State Boy. Y'all going to need that book. And if you plan on becoming an instructor, he's going to help you pass that test. If you have a student that you want to become an instructor, you don't have to waste your time prepping them and getting them ready. He's going to do that for you. So I definitely wanted you all to meet him. Thomas, what else did you want to share with him? Um, well, here, I want to answer. I got a couple of questions here. Uh, the first one, somebody in the panelist says that thanks for helping her uh, because she has the book. So, I mean, there's proof as well that you're just not, you know, saying that you and I are not just saying stuff to say stuff like it's real. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I, don't understand. I, I don't have a horse in the race. I have nothing mm, to gain from you I That's can be true. myself and be real and keep it 100 because I don't have anything to gain. 
and I ain't got nothing to lose. Right, right, right. Uh, and then this book says, do I have the crossover from Barber uh, to Barber Instructor in this in this little book? Uh, no, it is, it, I, it's not set up for those trying to get their uh, instructor license. I don't even want to tell you that it is, but if it is a person, whether it is a barber or a cosmetologist that's trying to get their license, then by all means, or if it's a barber trying to cross over into cos or vice versa, then yes, it, it will help in that regard. But barber to instructor, um, uh, barber practitioner to barber instructor, no, no, unfortunately it, it is not. Um, and yeah, you're right. The book is small, and that was the that was the the whole the whole ticket, you know, like Jen said. And and he was telling me while I was at Bronner and while I was at Premier, he would say things like, "Hey, make sure that you show people the book that they are forced to read, which is that 900 page, and then put it beside your 60 page book. Like lay it on top of each other. Let them see the size." Um, and I did. You know, but yeah, just as far as, uh, and like I said, man, like he's the one who who told me to write, it. you know, like when it's all said and done, you know, I was just going to go down there. I was going to speak. They were going to write me, what you know, what's the check, like $100, $150, something like that. And uh, I was just going to enjoy my time in Atlanta. Um, I sold these. Um, oh, and there's another thing. One thing that I didn't do that Chen told me to do, uh, I was afraid to, to make the book too, too expensive, right? Number one, because it is, it's a real small book. It's real tiny. Um, and then I, I mean, this was my first book that I wrote. So, you know, I was kind of scared and I did my own self-publishing. Um, and then he gave me a site. I don't know if he's, he's told you guys the site, but, uh, I still use them 48 hour books. Mm -hmm. I still, to this day, that is still the person Wait, who, who you makes write my that book, Thomas. I remember you coming to office when you was writing that. Um, shoot, I wrote this, uh, 2015 was the first version. So six years ago was the first version. So yeah, I've sold 4,006 years of self-publishing, but, uh, um, because I'm getting ready to start publishing the, the second one. This is the 48 hour book, um, the ultimate guide to a 48 hour book where they show you different and this is all thanks to Chen, actually. This is uh, where they show you the different types of paper to get, you know, because now, and uh, what else? The different types of paper, your covers, things of that nature. Because, you know, one, one thing, another thing that Chen just taught me is, you know, like after you get to a certain level uh, and after you've accomplished certain things, like you can get better at the thing and you can fine tune whatever the thing is while other people are trying to create a thing. You know, so like now when I pick up books, when I look at books, things of that nature, I don't necessarily look at the material in the book. I now feel the cover. I feel the paper. I look at the font. Um, I see what things um, I can I can take from that book uh, um, marketing wise, the feel of the cover, things of that nature to add to either my next book or the workbooks or, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, to just make my product better as, as I, as other people are trying to either write something or come up with something, computer programs, or even, um, you know, cause I've ghost written two books now, Chen. So I've technically, I've written like four books total, two of my own, as well as I've, I've ghost written for two people now. Um, and they're doing, they're doing fairly well. Legally, I can't tell people, you know, so I'm not going to tell all your people who are going to watch you. But yeah, there's a couple of hair books out there that are mine. I just can't tell people. And people, to, to keep your mouth quiet, people write big checks. So so thank you again. But um, I was afraid to really price my book out there. So when I was there, I was telling people, hey, you know, I'll sell this book to you guys for 10 bucks, you know, and, you know, you know you'll love the book, whatever, whatever. So after I gave my presentation, Bronner was going to give me like 100, 150 bucks to speak and, and call it a day. Even though my book was only $10 at the time, I made $350 off the rip, right? So I spoke for 45 minutes and got 350 cash. And I was like, I was looking at my wife. I was like, hey, this, this book is something like these people ate this up. This book is something. And I made, you know, over over a thousand, I forget how much it was, but I made over a thousand dollars speaking all off of the book only. 
even though like I wasn't going to do anything at all. So I really thank Chin for that. And then from there, um, because because Chin was saying like, hey, whatever you make the price like, quit looking at it as though it's a small book. You're trying to charge people based off of the size of it. It's not the book itself. It's the material inside, like judging the book by its cover, right? Like you see a person, you know, like take Bruce Lee, for instance, small dude, real skinny, you know, all of that stuff. But you can put him against one of the biggest giants and he'll knock that giant on down, right? So it's, it's what's inside. So he was telling me, hey, the information in the book is what you're selling, not the size and all of that stuff. And so now the book's 23 bucks unless people buy them in bulk. Um, so I, I instantly increased the price by over 100%, to be honest. And it's still not a, a book like 23 bucks is not a lot when you're trying to pass your exam or keep your people in compliance. Um, but as far as what else am I doing, getting ready to put out another trainer book, getting ready to do some more. Uh, I'm doing the first uh, online. Uh, well, I'm doing it live in Knoxville, but we're also going to stream it live, uh, a 16-hour continuing ed seminar. This will be the first one Tennessee has ever seen. Uh, and if it goes well, then I'm going to sell it to the state. Um, so I'm doing that. Um, so let's see, we're doing continuing ed. We're doing this. Um, but I have to do some partnerships uh, with a couple of schools as well. I can't wait to jump on that. I've been writing a couple of curriculums uh, for some schools. I've written a couple of ICERs. Uh, I don't know if Chen has told you guys about that. That's after you guys get your schools. Um, there, there's this, there's this document. It's like your school's Bible, pretty much, that you have to write. That you can pay a lawyer five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars to do. Um, I write those now as well, uh, which is not five grand, but it's, it's, it's up there. It's, it's a comma in it. Let me just say that before we just start, you know, tailing my pockets. But um, I like writing those just because I'm surprised at how many people are not, how many schools are not in compliance. Um, and then, yeah, I also do a few audits. I just, I don't know, anything dealing with state board compliance, which, like you said, that's why I go by the, the name. Mr. State Board, because things that keep schools, instructors, people in compliance, that's what that's what I do, man. That's okay. it. So. Okay. Um, we're gonna do some some QA. I know y'all got some questions. So we just had Mr. State Board. I want everybody to follow Mr. State Board on Instagram. So mm -hmm. let's see. We're that's gonna me. bring some people in. 